the Joe Rogan experience. The thing that I keep going back to is like, at the end of the day, my head on my pillow, do I feel good about the choices I'm making? And do I stand strong in my beliefs? Yes. Then I'm not going to let what someone in Idaho has to say about what I'm doing. Today. Well, people want absolutes, right? Whether it comes to recovery from drugs and alcohol or whether it comes from anything, they, do, they don't want you to deviate from the path and they want you to always be helpless in the face of your addictions, mm -hmm. right? This is the, this is the thought process between a, a lot of the 12 step programs that you're helpless in the face of your addictions. Um, I don't know if that's true. I have never had a drug or an alcohol addiction. I've never had that kind of a compulsion. So I don't know. But what I read about you is that you think of yourself now as California sober. Mm -hmm. Like, t please tell me what the fuck California sober <laughs> is. What I is saw that? the smile on your face like start to form <laughs> and it just made me so happy. <laughs> All right. Well, so part of my um, process now is like not defining the parameters publicly because I don't feel like it's anybody's business but me and my treatment team. But it's a term that a lot of people use uh, to identify this path of moderation with the help of some green plants. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I do. And so green is the key word. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's that. <laughs> yeah, but... It's it's such a loaded subject that even bringing it up, you have to kind of guard yourself from the way other people are going to perceive what you're doing, right? I'm a celebrity and I guard everything I say. Even if I'm speaking my truth, I still have to guard it to some degree because I don't, I, I'm working so hard not to offend mm, anyone, okay. you know? Yeah. So it's like, yes, yeah. but every aspect of my life is that way now. Now, do you find that this green stuff makes you more relaxed in dealing with the anxieties of life, or like what is? What's... Well, just, the green stuff is weed. We'll just like yeah, yeah, well, that's what yeah, I assumed. yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll just like call it what it is. Um, yeah, it's it's something that you know it helps, and it also like is is something that you can use for different things it can it it helped me learn how to meditate at first mm. you know it was a lot easier to smoke a little bit and then meditate than it was to just go in without with just like the most clear mind it, right. it helped me build a relationship with meditation to where I don't need it to meditate anymore you know there's there's things there's benefits to it and I think there's also just a, a sense of security and knowing that um that even if I'm having a bad night and I turn to that, that's not going to kill me. Right. You know, I guess you'd get there without weed. You can, you totally can. Yeah. I just found that like, weed gets you there quicker. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> um, and I just, yeah, I, there's, it doesn't hurt you. That's the thing. No. It's like, it doesn't hurt your body, but I do know people that have gotten addicted to weed, you know? And yeah. And I that's think, something to be mindful of for yeah. sure. But I, I it's have... It's not a physical addiction, though. It's not an addiction like alcohol or benzos right. or coke or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an impulse. It's a psychological addiction. That's right. what it is. Yeah. I mean, maybe for some people it's a physical addiction, like really, really rare. But for most people, there's no... There's nothing happens when you get off it. There's no withdrawals. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's something to be, like, mindful of, just, like, any thing new in my life I kind of I have a treatment team that I run things by so you run weed by them yeah and what'd they say whatever you know I came out of I went to treatment for like a relapse I relapsed in uh 2019 and, and it was heavy and it was a heavy one well, yeah. explain to everybody what you went through because it's like you it sounds normal yeah. but you almost died so I overdosed on heroin and crack that was well the heroin was laced with fentanyl and um i od'd in 2018 and that 
experience was a near-death experience for me. The doctors told me I had five to ten minutes before it was too late. Um, when they found me, I was blue. I was – there was blood. And it was just I had three strokes, a heart attack, and multiple organ failure, and I still have brain, brain damage from it. And what kind of brain damage? So I have blind spots in my vision, and I also had hearing loss from everything. Um, the blind spots are like, like I don't, I don't drive. Um, I can't unless I was on like an open dirt road, and I could just like, I just don't want to put other people at risk on the roads. Um, so you like normally you see everything, like you see everything in front of you right now. No. no. So even like your face, I see your eyeballs. When I'm looking at your eyes, I see your eyes, but I don't see your nose, your mouth, or even your microphone. What do you see? This part. It looks like I, I looked at the sun. Whoa. You know, when you're a kid and you look at the sun, cause someone told you not to, cause I'm that kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like that. When you look at the sun and like, your, or, or even like a, a camera flash and it kind of goes like, greenish bluish it's not black but it's you can't see and it's just like a blind spot that takes over kind of like everybody's bottom half of their face whoa and so my but focal, could you focus on someone's bottom half of their face if they were smiling I, could you look down yes, at their teeth i have to look down at people's mouths when they talk so you only see like a stripe like yeah. a strip of their face yeah literally just exactly where you put it i could see the top of your wow. fingers but not your hand and so for the first few months, like, I, I couldn't read out of a book. Um, I was so hard to, like, tweezing my eyebrows. Couldn't do that at first. How do you um, live? <laughs> how do you live? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my brows are extremely important to me, so that they was a huge thing. <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> thank you so much. You, thank you. You're doing a great job, um, whatever you can you. see. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> whatever you can see. <laughs> 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 you Oh my god! Uh, but yeah, it's, so there was things that, and, and like I had to ask like opinions on my outfit. Like I oh, couldn't, wow, couldn't see w what shoes went with my outfit. Is this getting any better? No. So it plateaued after six months. Like whatever it would be at after six months after the overdose would be what it'll be for the rest of my life. And so, and this is from the stroke. Mm -hmm. <sighs> wow. So this this experience that you had. You're, you're, you had a heart attack, you had strokes, you have this vision issue that's going to exist for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure everyone around you then was like, hey, you got to stay the fuck away from all drugs forever. Like, this is it. Like, we almost lost you. Yeah. This could be it for your life. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you ease into weed from there? So it's, it took a lot of time. Um... What was the impetus? Like, what what led you to do it? Um, what led me to do it, actually, was I got into recovery from my bulimia. And I thought, all right, this is an addiction I've had since I was 12. How is it that everything started at 12 for me? I was like, how is it that I finally found recovery from this, but yet I'm still struggling with substances? I thought, well, what am I doing with food that's different? And I wasn't looking at it from a dogmatic approach, this all or nothing mentality. You know, I was eating Taco Bell and letting myself keep it down and not throwing it up anymore. And that to me was a new, the normal person like doesn't know that that, of course, that's what you do with Taco Bell. You let, right. you, you let it sit. This was a new fucking idea for so me for i was you, like my would, mind was blown you would eat you would go on a bender eat ta taco bell and then just like okay out of the pool boys blah pretty much yeah pretty much the, every time you ate something terrible like that you knew that you were gonna throw it up yeah yeah and um so when i when i went after i had relapsed in 2019 on the hard stuff um i went back to the treatment center i'd gone to right after uh treatment and I just said to them I was like I I think I need to allow myself the ability to really try this middle path and not like before when I said I was on a middle path but really was like going 
was like really trying to party. Like I'm, I mean, like if I want to smoke, then I'll let myself smoke. And I just, I kind of came to terms with, I kind of came up with that and talked it through with my treatment team back home and let everyone know like, Hey, this is, I have to own my truth. And, um, and my treatment team said, okay, like, we'll support you and stand by you. What do you need from us that will help? And it was at that point that like I started getting this thing called the Vivitrol shot, which is um, a shot that blocks all the opiate receptors in your brain. So if, you know, I mean, honestly, even if I were to get in, like in a bad injury and go to the hospital, I couldn't even get opiates in a hospital because like my body will reject them so much it goes into withdrawals immediately really yeah and then but, but, but why do you need that um so f it also helps with bulimia because what people don't realize about bulimia is that it helps um bulimia when you throw up your opiate receptors go off in your brain so sometimes people actually get addicted to the high you get after throwing up <laughs> rather than like people think that it's like there's actually a physical component in your brain that people get addicted to. Um, and that's why people become addicted to the feeling the, that euphoria after you. That's crazy. Yeah. I had no idea. I thought it just, mm -hmm. you always felt every time I've ever thrown up, I'd felt terrible. I never would have imagined that there's a, I guess because you're sick. Yeah. I think like if you're not sick, Maybe you don't feel terrible. I don't. I don't understand. I don't know. But now I'm thinking of trying it. No, no, <laughs> no, no! Oh my God, no, I'm no, kidding. no! Oh, I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. Listen, okay, okay. I'll never be bulimic. I fucking I eat like a pig. And that's okay. It's okay to eat like a pig. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, if that's what if that's what makes you happy, <laughs> then like own your truth and live it. All you right. know? So I, I'm still curious as to like what about weed made you want to even introduce it into your life after working so hard to be sober right. and having this horrible experience with overdosing. Right. So I dealt, I often say, and this is really hard for people to hear sometimes, but I think that drugs saved my life at times because had I not had something to medicate with, I wouldn't be here. I would have taken my life by now. I've dealt with suicidal ideation since I was seven years old. And that's just something that's always been a part of my journey. I don't know why, but depression is, I've been, I've had a journey with that. Um, there was a period of time where I thought to myself, I'm so miserable. I'm still sober. Now I'm sober again. This is after the overdose. I'm so sober and still so unhappy. What am I doing? And I got to this place where I kept thinking, if I pick up, you know, that term, um, I had been told so many times by people in recovery or treatment team, whatever, not this treatment team, but a different one, that if I picked up that I would die. And I, I thought to myself, what kind of life am Am I living if I'm miserable 24 seven? And if I feel like the bottom is gonna drop out, I'm gonna die. Like that's not really a life to live. And so I thought, what if there's some sort of relief in between that's not gonna kill me, that's not, um, that's not, I don't know, super dangerous. You know, what is it? And I thought, well, I live in California. Mm, <laughs> you yeah. know, why not a little weed? And so I tried it and it wasn't so bad and I, began to appreciate what it could do for me, it stopped me from going to the other things. A lot of people say that weed is a gateway drug, but what people don't know is that it can also be a drug that can provide a little bit of relief for people who feel like when they get that low, they're either going to pick up something really dark, really heavy, or something more ominous you know yeah i don't buy that gateway shit i don't either i really don't and i don't if you, buy it with anything also I, I hate even calling weed a drug because it's a sacred plant like it's sacred medicine and so talking like a healer 
<laughs> I am. I am. But it, but it is. It's like it's under the category of sacred yeah. plant medicine. Medicine. So there's there's definitely some magical properties to it. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.